Thank you, Bob, and everyone who's already been thanked. Sherry D, it's always wonderful to be here at the festival, and Mike, for making us look bigger than we really are, because cameras do that. Um, and Rose, and David, and Lisa, and um, Lynn, and um, Allie, and Allie's glamorous mother, I wanted to say on the mic, I, went, I see where you get all your glamour, Allie. Anyway, I'm going to start with a very short poem that's not in this book that I, read, I wrote the other week when I was at a book launch do, trying, doing what I often find myself doing wherever I am, is trying not to stare too much at attractive men. And um, I wrote this short poem, in, and, I've, and it's called Creation. And it goes like this. <clears throat> His lips were so beautiful, I worry there may not have been enough time for his brain to develop. <laughs> I'm going to read one long poem in the beginning. For one reason, David Scollard requested it. It's kind of a dare, because if anyone who knows David, we love him for his purity, his grace, and the fact that he always chooses the most vulgar poem in the book. <clears throat> so I'll save the shorter, more comical poems for the second half. This is a performance poem, and it's called Airing Before the Summer Ends, and it's actually based on a, a, a multimedia um, performance piece I was involved in many years ago. <clears throat> We climbed the stairs of a partially gutted walk-up, destined to become a sports bar, and were handed a hat full of rooms. I deftly pulled a small strip of paper from the pile and unfolded a crumpled bit. It read, toilet. And we laughed until they cried, somehow knowing we would take that dilapidated lavatory and lovingly desecrate the name of God with three-ply tissue, exploding bulrushes, and torn old Bibles. Dragging our sorry asses up and down those stairs, storing baskets of leaves, brown swaddled baby dolls, burlap bound stacks of testaments old and new from Sally Ann. Arms stiff with blasphemy, and the roaring flames of your putrid, hot-knifed, sky-high, bi-curious passion, rising, then wilting between your pimpled thighs, soaring sullenly into my pulmonary parts, like some little arrow with my name burned in the first degree into heavy breathing patterns, in and out, and in and out, and here we go, milling round the bush of fine brown pubic hair, gasping and sighing, awed by the sheer, unwarranted beauty of your curly plate scrotum burning its own brazen godless image into hearts and lungs. External pouches, muscles burning, burning, burning with the sharp, unbearable pain of stinking flesh and bone as it gushes into potted gutters of rank, herpetic stewed and broken, postulating hearts. Pulmonates. Land, snails, slugs, fresh water, clam-like, decidedly non-delicacies with mollusks functioning as a lung, remind me of the many ways in which you breathed so softly in and out with faintly macho oohs and ahs, the odd girlish shriek as I rammed that small angelic butt plug up your, what you named in soft pornish whispers, mutters, sighs, my virgin lily white, the only lily in your butt bouquet resides in your sullied liver, you blue bald bad boy, baby, my baby, my rockabye bad boy. I humiliate myself in doggerel inspired by drunken minnowy whiners. My ass, your virgin ass, I cry as if, as if you don't count the times your ex-wife refused to shaft you with the huge ribbed black dildo you bought at the local porn shop and put in her stocking during your first Christmas as man and wife and that she mistakenly opened in front of her holiday Tupperware party guests, <laughs> thinking that it was a tennis bracelet. Some fucking condiment tray that must have been. 
So, so there you went sheepish and heavy-hearted out to the garage in a light snow and drank a flask of lemon gin, followed by a half liter of mandarin vodka and a vintage 455 RPM copy of Crocodile Rock melted in the back window of your motorless MG, and then you fucked yourself silly under the chassis with the rubberized end of a favored broom, clasped skillfully between your ankles, loving your little pink hole in a way only a small, manual, domesticated carpenter's tool can. <laughs> like Jesus when he tried to explain to Mary Magdalene that he couldn't take her home to meet his virgin mother since her house was too immaculate for the likes of some market-going, manger-baiting sister, son of a lord-loving, bocce-playing tomboy. God loved her and so do I. Feigning surprise when she divorced you, who knew, who knew, who fucking well knew, the little preyed upon femme sparrows sing song in the schoolyard as you sulk and skewer your way back to adolescence in the veiny pounding engorged folds of my full round still lily petal livered heart shaped cock waiting and waiting and waiting to be told that you don't love me or care about me, but would you like to be intimate with me at least 12 more times before the summer ends? Before the summer ends, before the summer ends, before the fucking summer ends, just 12 more times before the fucking summer ends, that's all I ask of you. You straight, white, anus-loving whore boy that I love and love and love and love and love until the cows come home to lap the dicks of farm-bred fellas, hell-bent on having their way with hired help, woodland creatures, and the grand proscenium, villainous, lithe, prismatic arch of their own hairy asshole. And there we were, finally, Airing like pampered nomads into hand-picked washrooms, culled from millinery mishaps with our giant wooden cross bound by yellow caution tape and hung with hoary bags of Gideon's balls. I calmly straightened the hem of my polka dot mall slut miniskirt as you anxiously tug at the drawstring of that second-hand purple speedo from St. Vincent de Paul, complaining that your crown of thorns needs dandelions for color. And then we both, we both burst into a thinning, crowd-pleasing, mass-appealing chorus of Jesus was a hermaphrodite to the tune of Dale Evans singing some classic hymn collecting change in the hollow, decapitated shell of a plaster St. Francis of a sissy, of a sissy, of a sissy, a goddamn sissy-loving, bird-watching, call-of-nature-mongering, rope-like, draw-stringed, brown-gown, glad, bald guy who makes a terrific lawn ornament in the white trash trailer park populated paradise of your fart-filled imaginary perfect life with a modern woman who doesn't appear to mind your insatiate racialized desire to get it up the ass nightly three times before mass on Sunday and you just have to stop lasciviously coveting that blunt plastic St. Polymer of ethylene crucifix in the cathedral gift shop or she'll divorce you again and again and a fucking again and would you you please stop singing Silent Night on the 21st of June as we gaze flat on our cracks at the mini golf moon, anticipating solstice. I lie impatiently awaiting your hand on my thigh, your sun on my celestial equator, your lips on my ecliptic southernmost point, your putter in my hole in one, and only your anus around me, every part of you enmeshed in the lionized skin of my 12 apostolic molars chewing, grinding, and sizing tablets of ridiculous, sublime, impossibly possible lovemaking along the edges of receding gums, letting love in at forbidden, viral-loading gates of dreaded, pearly premonitions. And then... And then a timed tape of exotic bird song blemishes our inexquisite a cappella treatment of a revisionist hymn as we dance out of the performance space, wailing in the throes of three double Campari's with soba, soda in the only bar below, and you laugh and smile and tell me our affair is over, then throw up on the patio into St. Frankie's hollow little squirrel-loving, fragile for mica-like soul, and I call out again and again and again and a fucking again, can't you wait to dump me into the trash bin of experimental summer love until the end of August? You can have the holiday weekend, but for the love of Christ, just give me one hot August, you supermodel-looking skinny-assed vagrant. It's my birthday in August. 
for the love of cock, and I can cry out again and again and again and a fucking again if I want to before the summer ends, before the summer ends, before the fucking summer ends, just 12 more times before the fucking summer ends. That's all I ask of you, you straight, white, anus-loving whore boy that I love and love and love and love and love until the cows come home to lap disciple dicks of farm-bred fellas hell-bent upon their way with hired help woodland creatures and the grand proscenium lithe prismatic villainous arch of their own hairy loving tweezer crazing craving assholes i am um, i just want to um i'm sorry i just became aware of the new party um in alberta and i forgot i wanted to dedicate that poem to the wild rose party thank you